Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed El Banani and I'm presenting our work Learning Visual Representations via Language Guided Sampling. This work was done with Karan Desai and Justin Johnson at the University of Michigan. People often say that a picture is worth a thousand words, but if you consider a single caption, you'll find that it describes a thousand images. While those images share the same concept, they each depict a different variation of it. In this work, we ask, can we use language guidance to learn generalizable visual representations? We propose a simple approach for learning visual representations using language guidance. Given a dataset of captioned images, we use a pre-trained language model to embed their captions. We then find the nearest neighbor in language embedding space and retain the resulting image pair. Each image pair will be conceptually similar but visually dissimilar. Finally, we use those pairs for contrastive learning by training a model to maximize pairwise visual embedding similarity. Now let's take a step back. Our goal is to learn generalizable visual representations. Such representations are typically learned on large web-collected datasets with the hope that they can generalize to arbitrary downstream tasks. Recent approaches have focused on instance discrimination. The core intuition is that a model can learn good representations through learning to identify different augmented versions of the same image. For example, given this image, you can augment it by cropping and flipping, blurring and grayscaling, or even color jittering. Although typically you want to use a combination of all those augmentations. This works very well despite ignoring how different images relate to each other. Subsequent work tried to learn from the relationships between the images. This could be done through clustering or nearest neighbor sampling in the learned visual embedding space. At the core of all those approaches is a reliance on image augmentations. While augmentations allow us to learn directly from the images, they dictate the visual invariances that we can learn from. This can be problematic for several downstream tasks as shown by Xiao et al. As a result, one has to ask, why are we only learning from images? Language provides us with a rich learning signal as the caption tells us exactly what's in the image. Recent work has demonstrated amazing generality by training image encoders through captioning and image text contrastive learning. The success of such approaches made us wonder if we could use language in a different way. We observe that captions not only tell us what's in the image, they also relate different images to each other, as similar images often have similar captions. Furthermore, slight modifications of the caption correspond to large variations in the image. For example, adding the word fluffy to the caption changes what the images look like, even if the concept fluffy itself may be difficult to ground. We operationalize this observation by using language models to sample conceptually similar images. Specifically, we sample nearest neighbors in the embedding space of a sentence birth model. A quick look at the sampled pairs reveals interesting visual variations for images of the same action, object, and scene. One way to think of this is that language sampling allows us to find natural augmentations. Such augmentations look very different from ones you get from typical augmentation strategies. More importantly, natural augmentations match the variation we see in the world in terms of pose, lighting, and context. For example, consider the Aston Martin or the gray horned owl seen here. Language allows us to sample images of them from different angles, in different poses, at different times of the day, but always the same car model and owl species. This combination of conceptual consistency and appearance variation is very valuable for visual representation learning. Now, let's consider our approach. Given a dataset of captioned images, we first use a frozen text encoder to find nearest captions. This could be done very efficiently offline. We then use the image pair for image-based contrastive learning. We contrast our approach with different contrastive approaches. Image-based approaches contrast embeddings for augmented versions of the same image. Language-based approaches contrast image and text embeddings in a joint embedding space. Finally, cluster-based approaches contrast the image embedding with the retrieved embedding. The retrieved embedding is often a cluster centroid with the nearest neighbor from previous batches. To properly understand the impact of the different learning signals, we retrain all the methods on the same dataset to ensure a fair comparison. We then evaluate the frozen backbones using linear probe and future classification on a wide range of downstream datasets. We find that instance discrimination achieves impressive generalization, given that it's only learning from the images themselves. 
When we consider cluster-based methods, we find that they underperform contrastive methods when trained on RedCaps. This is surprising as they often outperform them when trained on ImageNet. We hypothesize that such methods can better leverage the curated nature of ImageNet, but struggle with less curated datasets like RedCaps. Language provides a boost in performance, especially for linear probe. This is expected as language adds semantics into the learning, which are absent in other approaches. Finally, through using language to guide the sampling, we observe a large performance gain on both linear probe and few shock classification. This clearly demonstrates the efficacy of our approach and suggests that language-guided contrastive learning might be a better representation learning strategy than learning a cross-modal joint embedding. One thing we wanted to understand was how much does SBIRT impact our performance? While CLIP only learns from the images and captions, we use a model trained on a separate large text corpus to sample our pairs. As a result, we wondered if we were just distilling SBIRT. To answer this question, we compared four models. First, we consider CLIP and our approach simpler trained with SBIRT sample pairs. To evaluate the impact of SBIRT on CLIP, we considered a CLIP and SBIRT hybrid model. Rather than train CLIP's text encoder from scratch, we simply used a frozen SBIRT model as the text encoder and learned a projection layer on top of it. If SBIRT features are particularly useful for visual representation learning, this should improve CLIP's performance. We also considered how we can remove our own reliance on SBIRT. We did this by using a CLIP trained on RedCaps to sample our pairs. Specifically, we use CLIP's text encoder. This allows us to train our model without any external data. As noted earlier, language sampling results in a large performance gain over the CLIP model. Adding SBIRT to CLIP actually degrades its performance. This suggests that while SBIRT features are good locally for nearest neighbor sampling, their global structure is not as helpful for visual representation learning. It is unclear if this is due to the difference in modality or simply the difference in the training data. On the other hand, sampling with a CLIP trained on RedCaps further improves performance. This result further shows the utility of language-guided learning and its robustness to the specific language encoder. In summary, we propose a novel approach for visual representation learning using language. Our approach relies on the simple observation that similar images have similar captions. Rather than learn a joint embedding, we use language to find conceptually similar images for contrastive learning. This results in large performance gains over prior methods. We only provided a small sample of our results in this talk. We also found that our approach can generalize to other contrastive formulations and scales very well with compute, dataset size, and dataset curation. Thank you for listening, and please check our paper for more details.